Hello and welcome back everyone to Universe Sandbox 2 and today we're going to be creating a solar system realistically. How great. I'm Spike Viper and make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy because this is going to be a lot of blowing things up. Because to begin, we're going to need to start with a star because this isn't some Big Bang stuff here. We got to start with something that's already got some mass. So we'll start with Proxima Centauri and we're going to supernova it to give us the material necessary to create our beautiful new new uh, solar system. How, how do we convince a healthy star to supernova? Eh, I'm sure we can just throw the sun at it. <laughs> that's super duper realist. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, wow. Okay, that kind of went the other way. Oh, whatever. You know what? We we got it. We we got <laughs> our material. All right. Now we have all of these gases all over the place, which I have uh, simulated using gas giants because I can't just create a fluid in Universe Sandbox yet. But these are going to slowly coalesce and as their gravity pulls them together, they'll merge, get bigger, more gravity, more power, and, and they're all going to eventually collide with each other. Obviously, this is going to be the largest object in this uh, area, so this is our most successful. Ultuna. I think Ultuna, which kind of sounds like an old tuna, um, is, is winning this one. But we're going to have to give it a little bit more material because... It's not yet feeling like a star. Come on. Come on, I know you want to do nuclear fusion. I can I can feel it. You want to begin stardom. Oh, I think it did for a second. And again. There's a there's a magnificent blue light I saw. I'm I think that may have been just a second. Maybe not. Wow, this is, honestly, this is taking much longer than I expected. <laughs> how, how much mass does this thing have? Wow, it's only a little bit larger than Jupiter. Jupiter is really big. That, that just makes you respect how large Jupiter is. Oh my god. Okay, uh, time to start feeding it Jupiters because that's the only way we're going to get to our star status faster all right now it's starting to grow quick wow all of those little gas giants and it didn't even get it close more of an effect oh it's gonna happen any second now we're getting to critical mass oh old tuna beautiful we're gonna pump up the mass a little bit more to make it more stable. Um, you may say, hitting it with more things can't make it more stable. Shush! I know what I'm doing. Great. Now we've got old tuna. Fantastic. We just need young tuna to go along with it. Alright, that's it. We've got our star. We've done it, guys. Good, good job, team. Now we have to create some planets. All right, that shouldn't be too hard. Dun, 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 dun. And as more and more material, why am I doing orbit? Still would be so much, oh! All right. That stuff just got absolutely ejected. Oh, because if I do still, it'll just fly away because this is a moving object that makes more sense all right so we have all this rocky material and it's all starting to coalesce into larger rocks some of them are just kind of orbiting but they'll be caught eventually what else can we do oh here we go we're starting to make some gains here this is a pretty large rock. It's no longer being destroyed by the sun. Its gravity is strong enough to hold its material onto itself. Um, ooh, this is actually really quite large. Not as large as Sedna. Not quite. 
not quite there. So we'll give it some more friends to help it out. We Okay, so it's it's very quickly gaining mass at this rate. It's three hundredths the size of Earth. It's having a fun time. It's actually got a spin now from getting hit from so many things. Uh, hit it with a few Maki Makis. Then we can just, like, get some water on it. At this point, all the things that are hitting it do determine uh, the composition of the planet. So, if we want water, we're going to have to hit it with things that have water. Alright, now it's almost a tenth of the size of Earth. Now we can start hitting it with larger things. Fun! Nice. This is looking pretty good. We're, we're getting some good definition, you know? Craters. Death. Good stuff. Can we hit it with Pluto? Yeah. Let's hit it with some Plutos. <laughs> Could possibly go wrong. Honestly, at this point, we should be feeding it moons because... It's it's large and oh yeah, you just feed it the moon. There we go, there we go. That'll get its mass up real quick. Okay, congratulations. We are at. I'm I'm happy with that. I don't want it to be exactly Earth. I just want it to be kind of like close. Look at that. Okay, now we got to name it. And of course, we all know what it's going to be named at this point. It's going to have to be Young Tuna. Uh, excuse me. Oh no, we just lost... Oh, there it is. Oh no, we lost it. Where is it? Oh no. Oh, there it is. Okay. Great. Yeah, that's a pretty big object. Alrighty, it's pretty cold. Um, although it's probably also pretty hot on one side. Yeah, yeah, the temperature really does range, doesn't it? <laughs> um, let's go ahead and name it Young Tuna. Young Tuna. Nice. And then we're just going to have to, uh, it looks like it's kind of glitching a little bit, probably from not being very stable. Uh... Let's check the composition. Is that flickering? The radius is actually going up over time, which is kind of neat. It's a decompressing. I have no clue what's going on on Young Tuna. Uh, it just, the temperature just seems to be very broken. So what we're going to do is we're going to save Young Tuna. We're going to delete Young Tuna and we're just going to put it back into the universe. Uh, and we're also going to remove all these fragments. Actually, no, we'll use those to make the other planets. That's fine. Uh, where is Young Tuna? My stuff. Why? Young Tuna. There we go. Okay. Try to give it a kind of flat orbital here. Is that more normal? Is the temperature... Ah, the temperature is no longer completely broken. Okay, so now it's warming up. And if we go to surface, we can see the uh, effective temperature is 820. So we want that to go down a bit. So we're going to tweak the albedo to try to reflect a lot of that heat. And get the effective temperature to be something more reasonable. Looks like we just need to reflect all of the heat pretty much. <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll see how that goes. Well, now it's just freaking cold. Maybe that number is not very good. Let's try 0 0.79. No, that number just doesn't seem to be very useful. Let's go back to 0 0.3 and see what happens. Wow, look at the, he the heat. Look at that. That, the map is just insane. It's so odd. It's very angry. Very, very angry. 
we really do have to balance that out a bit and the best way to do that is going to be to expand we by that I just mean we're gonna move it further away from the star because wow that worked a little bit better than I was expecting okay uh, let's get a motion and just auto orbit yeah it's really close to the star like really close um, and it's a very active star <laughs> So getting the temperature to even out on it is going to be a challenge. Uh, which is why I'm pretty sure we're going to actually move it much, much further. We'll move it, like, over here. There we go. I think that'll be a better spot for it. And now let's get Young Tuna. Let's get a little bit of a wiggle there. Wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And we're going to go ahead and try our best to get this temperature stuff sorted out. Because this is getting a little bit redonkulous. So, equilibrium temperature. Boo! Oh, 27.2! That would be perfect! That would actually be really damn good. Alright. But, is it actually going to reach that temperature? No. Why? Why are you so broken? It's really not balancing the temperature out at all. Oh, come on, that should have actually worked. What the heck? All right, take two, everyone. We're, we're doing it in a new, a brand new world. All right. We'll get old tuna. We'll get young young tuna. We'll view the habitable zone, which is about there. All right. We'll put young tuna in like the warmer area. There we go. Let's see how young tuna's doing now. Is it better? Are things not absolutely broken? <laughs> it's warming up! Oh my god, it's happening! It's actually kind of a little bit stable. You know what may be breaking it a little bit? It may be the speed at which Young Tuna is spinning. It's spinning so fast. I wonder if that's causing a problem. What is the rotational period is three hours. Let's make it 12. See if that helps out at all. All right, but we're starting to see what we wanted to see. We're seeing that surface temperature start to rise. The effective temperature is negative 45. So we actually want to let a bit more heat in. Oh, it's just, it's too cold. Alright, we're gonna have to move Young Tuna closer. There we go. That'll be more than close enough. Probably a little bit too close. Okay, let's check the effective temperature again. Negative 9, really? Really, still not close enough. This is really odd, because this is quite close. This is very much quite close. It must just be a very weak star. Alright, that's gotta do it. Service temperature, effective temperature, 30 degrees. Perfect. Let's make it 23.9. Beautiful, young tuna. Can now support water. Look at that. It's very square water. It's a little bit odd. Let's go ahead and just tweak it a tiny bit to try to fix that. Boop. There we go. So we've got our 
Well, you can really see that we kept hitting the center of it when we were adding mass. We left like a strip. There's like a line that's the ocean. And then, I mean, we have an atmosphere, we've got water, and we've got a pretty survivable temperature. Uh, I say that now we do the thing that's the fun part. We go ahead and make it green. Actually, green's a little bit boring. Let's do green and purple. It's alien life, you know? Probably won't look like the life we have. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool looking. We can change the atmosphere color as well. Kind of like, uh, dark blue. Oh, beautiful. Young Tuna, you're looking good. We did it, folks. We made a beautiful planet and a beautiful star. Now it just needs siblings. I'm not going to repeat the Young Tuna process. Maybe if you guys beg me for a full, a full, like, hour-long video, this is already getting really quite long. Um, instead, we're just gonna add a few more and we'll we'll make them look nice so we'll call this one minnow <laughs> we're just doing a fish themed here uh, there we go minnow and then we'll go ahead I'm kind of happy with how it looks actually that one kind of looks on point And then this one, oh, that one looks really cool too. I'll call this guy Shark. That does look really neat. I think with an atmosphere, it would look a little bit neater though. Is that water on its surface? I think that's water. How? Oh wow, it's just below boiling point. Um, we will probably ruin that when we add an atmosphere. Oh, never mind. That made it habitable, kind of. It's cold now. Huh. Wow, what are the chances? That one just happened to be, like, perfect. Oh, that looks so neat. I'm literally just going to keep it. Wow. Look at that. That looks really cool. Alright. Okay. So, Young Tuna, we're gonna go ahead and do one last thing. We're gonna turn on City Lights. Nice. Because it's it's a living, beautiful planet with sentient, sentient tunas that are just, you know, chillin'. And then Shark is just like a bunch of floppin' sharks on the surface. It's great. Oh, I absolutely love how that planet looks. Oh, and I lost it. But we did it, guys! We created our own solar system! It only took a very long time. Thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Make sure to uh, consider becoming a... Hello, camera. Autofocus. There you go. Consider becoming a Patreon supporter if you really enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.